hello children so today's topic uh, is uh, about uh, coordinate geometry up to straight lines sets relations functions linear inequalities and uh, statistics okay today we first discuss about the synapses and then uh, problems so basically first uh, the basic coordinate uh, geometry so the basic one concept is about the distance formula if i consider the point p x and y1 the distance of the point from horizon is this is x1 comma y1 distance from horizon is equal to root over x square plus y square if it is x1 y1 root of x square plus y1 square coming to the normal formula that is a point is x1 y1 b point is x2 y2 the distance between the two points is nothing but root over x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square the next one is about the section formula so if uh, p is any point uh, which divides the line joining the two points a comma p so in the ratio m is to n internally then mx2 plus nx1 by m plus n my2 plus ny1 by m plus n coming to the point if it divides uh, the point p divides a b line a to p and p to p in the ratio m is to n externally then mx2 minus nx1 by m minus n and my2 minus ny1 divided by m minus n is a formula and if uh, p happen to be the midpoint of a b then i say that uh, the midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 by 2 comma y1 plus y2 by 2 and uh, the next one is about the centers of the triangle so how about uh, the centroid of the triangle first one next in center ortho center circumcenter what exactly the centroid of the triangle means uh, this is the formula you know the, from the basic one so it is very simple uh, point of uh, intersection of the medians is called the centroid and the formula is x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3 y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3 so sum of x coordinates plus sum of y coordinates average and what is meant by in center of the triangle in center means actually the point of internal angle bisector the point of intersection of internal angle bisector of the triangle if i take up internal angle this is internal angle bisector internal angle bisector internal angle bisector the meet at one point so there that is going to be called in center of the triangle and if the vertices are given to you so a vertex and b vertex c vertex are given to you a formula to calculate uh, the in center is given by this one a x1 plus b x2 plus c x3 by a b c a plus b plus c a y1 plus b y2 plus c y3 where a small a is nothing but the side length opposite to the vertex a similarly b opposite to the vertex b c will be the opposite to the vertex c and a coordinates are x1 y1 b coordinates x2 y2 c coordinates x3 y3 then you can calculate the formula coming to circumcenter what is meant by circumcenter of the triangle so in a triangle if i consider the perpendicular bisector of the side of the triangle perpendicular bisector perpendicular bisector meet at one point and that circum that point is called circumcenter with that center if you construct a circle a circle passes through the vertices and that is called circumcircle and whose radius is given by circum radius and that's called the circumcenter of the circle yes generally uh, ortho center of the triangle what is meant by ortho center of the triangle in any triangle if you drop the perpendicular from one vertex to the opposite side so perpendicular 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 they meet at one point and that point is called the ortho center of the triangle coming to the next concept is about area of the triangle so you might have done it already in the lower class uh, generally basic formula is half into base into height but that uh, when vertices are given to you a b c 
then this is actually the formula to calculate. We know we can write in the simplest form sigma x1 multiplied by y2 minus y3 is a formula to calculate area of the triangle. Okay. And if the area of the triangle is zero, the points are said to be the collinear points. And area of the quadrilateral. When uh, four vertices of a quadrilateral are given to you, you can take up x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, x4, y4, x1. Again, x1, comma y1, repeated. And then cross multiplying x1, y2 minus x2, y1. Okay, plus x2, y3 minus x3, y2 plus x3, y4, x3, y4. Okay, x3, y4 plus y3, x4 plus the remaining part. So that gives you the area of the triangle overall modulus sign. Coming to the next concept is about locus. What is meant by locus? The locus is nothing but actually the curve. The path traps, the path traced by a moving point under one or more given conditions. So the path of a moving point, the path of a moving point under one or more given condition is called the locus. Okay, it's called locus. Coming to some of the important points which are, may save your time in simplifying the problem. In case uh, in any triangle ABC, if the midpoints of the sides are given to you as D comma E comma F. So the vertex A can be expressed in terms of D E F as. Okay, by completing this uh, triangle, therefore you can see that A, E, D and F is a parallelogram. The midpoint of these two is nothing but midpoint of these two by using the concept A plus D by 2 is the same as E plus F by 2. So from here A can be expressed as E plus F minus D. So likewise the other vertices also can be expressed E plus F minus D and D minus E plus F B and C is E minus F plus D. And uh, the next one important point the same concept you can apply even for the parallelogram also. Suppose when you take up A, B, C points or vertices are given to you, you may ask to calculate the D coordinates, which is same as the midpoint of these two is same as the midpoint of these two. And that gives you concept of D is equals to A plus C minus B. That's concept. Coming to the next concept about the straight line. So, if a straight line makes an angle theta with the positive direction of x axis, then tan theta is defined to be called the slope denoted by m of the straight line and uh, theta lies between 0 and pi. Of course, when uh, the slope is equal to 0, that represents a slope of the line coincides with x axis. When m is equal, when theta is equal to pi by 2, it's a vertical line, it has a no slope. I mean, its slope is not defined. Coming to the next concepts, so they are nothing but uh, uh, if the two lines uh, are taken with the slopes as m1, comma m2. Now, let me consider m1, m2 are the slopes of the two lines. When m1 m is equal to m2, the two lines are said to be parallel. When the product of slopes m1, m2 is equal to minus 1, the lines are said to be perpendicular to each other. And the slope of line joining the two points. So let me take up this is x1, comma y1 and this is x2, comma y2. The slope of line joining the two points is given by the formula y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. Okay, let's revise some of the other points. The equation to the coordinate axis and the lines parallel to the coordinate axis. We know equation to x axis is x y is equal to 0. Equation to y axis is x is equal to 0. An equation to the line parallel to the x-axis is y is equal to constant and equation to the line parallel to the y-axis is x is equal to constant. Okay. x is equal to constant. x equals to b or you can say that. Okay. Let's see that. These are the sum of the equations of the straight line. The 
first one is about the slope form of the equation to the straight line y minus y slope point form it is a straight line which is passing through x1 comma y1 having x1 y1 and having a slope is equal to m y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1 second one is a two point formula it is nothing but an equation to a line joining the two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 and third one is an equation to the straight line whose uh, intercept on axis is equal to a comma b if a straight line makes an intercept a on x axis y intercept b on y axis its equation can be written as x by a plus y by b is equal to 1 where a comma b are the x intercept and the y intercept and the next one y is equal to mx plus c represents an equation to a straight line whose uh, y intercept is equal to c a straight line makes an intercept c on y axis and the slope of that line is equal to m coming to the next one this represents an equation to the straight line in the normal form suppose uh, when i drop a perpendicular from horizon to the line and that length happened to be p and that is uh, called the normal to the straight line and if it the normal makes an angle alpha with the x axis then equation to that particular line is given by x cos alpha plus y sin alpha is equals to p and this is called normal form of the line coming to the next one if i consider l1 is a straight line ax a1x plus b1y plus a1 is equal to 0 and l2 is a straight line a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to 0 then an equation like l1 plus lambda times l2 is equal to 0 represents a family of lines passing through intersection of l1 and l2 let's say this is a line 1 and this is a line 2 and uh, this represents an equation to the straight line l1 plus lambda l2 for different values of lambda you will be getting different straight lines so that uh, consist that uh, combined together they form a, a family of lines coming to the next one equation to a line in the general form a first degree equation uh, in x comma y that is ax plus by plus c is equal to zero where at least one of a comma b is not zero simultaneously both of them not zero simultaneously that equation represents an equation to a straight line in the general form and the slope of that straight line is equal to minus a by b an x intercept when i take up x ax plus by plus c can be written as minus c and x divided by minus c by a plus y divided by minus c by b is equals to 1 and this is in the form of x by a plus y by b is equals to 1 which is making an intercept of length minus c by a and intercept on y axis a length of minus c by b so x intercept is minus c by a y intercept is equals to minus c by b by the straight line ax plus by plus c is equals to 0 let me consider what is meant by angle between how do you calculate the angle between the two lines so let's revise the concept so if theta is angle between the two straight lines whose slopes are m1 m2 then tan theta is given by m1 minus m2 by 1 plus m1 m2 the same thing if the straight line are given in the form like a general form this first line is l1 equal 0 second line is l2 is equal 0 they are in the form like a1x plus b1y plus c1 0 a2x plus b2y plus c2 0 then the corresponding slopes m1 is equals to minus a1 by b1 and m2 is equals to minus a2 by b2 and by substituting the slopes you are going to have the same formula tan theta is equals to a1 b2 minus a2 b1 by a1 a2 plus b1 b2 formula and now what is the condition for the lines to be parallel when l1 is a parallel to l2 the condition is nothing but a1 by a2 equals to b1 by b2 we know the slopes are equal so it means m1 is equals to m2 that gives you condition a1 by a2 equals to b1 by b2 and when the two lines are perpendicular you know m1 m2 is equal to minus 1 that simplifies the problem as a1 a2 plus b1 b2 is equal to 0 coming to the next concepts now when the two lines are parallel or coincident when the two lines are coincident corresponding uh, coefficients of x y and constants are proportion a1 by a2 equals to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c2 
when the two lines are parallel then i say a1 by a2 equals to b1 by b2 but not equals to c1 by c2 when the two lines are perpendicular then i say a1 a2 plus b1 b2 is equals to 0 when the two lines are intersecting their a1 by a2 not equals to b1 by b2 so remember these conditions so and apply the concepts and the problems to get the solution coming to the next one the length of the perpendicular drawn from x1 comma y1 onto the straight line this is x1 comma y1 onto the straight line ax plus by plus c equals 0 the length of the perpendicular is given by the formula a1 ax1 plus by1 plus c divided by root of a square plus b square and the point of intersection of the two lines a1 x plus b1 y plus c1 equals 0 a2 x plus b2 y plus c2 equals 0 a point of intersection means a point which satisfies both the equations is called the point of intersection of the lines L1 equals 0 and L2 equals 0 and a formula given by them is nothing but this one. Okay, right. Distance between the two parallel lines. We know that AX plus BY, AX plus BY is same X coordinate, X coefficient and Y coefficients are there. They differ by a constant C1 and C2. So, such lines are nothing but the parallel lines and the distance between them can be calculated by the formula. So, C2 minus C1 divided by root over A square plus B square. Coming to the next, the concurrency of the two, three lines. Suppose if I consider L1 is one straight line, L2 is another straight line and if L3 also passes through this point of intersection of L1, L2, Okay, then I say that three lines are said to be concurrent at one point. Okay, then what is the condition for the concurrency? You just take up the two straight lines, solve them and then substitute in the third line. That gives you the condition here. So, L1 is nothing but actually A1x plus B1y plus C1 is equal to 0. Similarly, L2 and L3 if you take up. The coefficients alone when you take up and the take up the determinant is equal to 0 is a condition that the three lines are said to be concurrent. That's one condition. Coming to the next uh, angle bisectors. Uh, angle bisectors we know that uh, if L1 is equal to 0 is one straight line and L2 is equal to 0 is another straight line. And uh, definitely there would be one uh, acute angle, one obtuse angle. The formula to calculate angle bisectors is nothing but actually this one a1x plus b1y plus c1 l1 divided by root over a1 square plus b1 square l2 divided by root over a2 square plus b2 square and if depending upon the plus or minus uh, which is a requirement of uh, the acute uh, angle bisector and obtuse angle bisector this is obtuse angle bisector acute angle bisector so this acute angle bisector between L1 and L2, the acute angle bisector, let us say M1, is obtained by with reference to condition. If A1, A2 plus B1, B2 is greater than 0, then take the minus sign over here and evaluate, you will be getting what you call acute angle bisector. Otherwise, we will be getting obtuse angle bisector. Or else, you can also calculate acute, acute angle bisector whether you take a positive sign or negative sign if you take one sign one ang, one line m1 another line l2 then calculate angle between them as a tan theta formula and if this is less than one that is acute angle bisector otherwise m2 will be the acute obtuse acute angle bisector that's it coming to the next one about the sets and relations concepts okay right sets and relations so what is meant by set uh, what is a basic one sorry i think uh, we missed out uh, one uh, concept over here so the concept is about this one is uh, actually the perpendicular bisector formula it means uh, the equation to the line joining i mean x1 comma y1 x2 comma y2 and uh, a straight line passing through the midpoint of line joining the two points and perpendicular to it is given by this formula 
So, in other words, you can say that x multiplied by x1 minus x2 plus y multiplied by y. So, y1 minus y2 is equals to. It is, uh, you can say that uh, OA square plus OB square minus OB square divided by 2. OA square is nothing but actually A, this is a, a point to x1 square plus y1 square. OB square is nothing but x2 square plus y2 square minus OB square divided by 2. So, the same formula can also be written in this fashion. Now, we shall proceed to relations and functions and sets. Uh, we know from the lower class uh, the sets uh, concepts. So, let me brush up as uh, uh, fast as possible. A set is a well-defined collection of objects. It is called a the set and the which are objects which are belonging to the set are called the elements of the set and that a set can be expressed in two ways one is called a roster form one one is a set builder form so roster form means listing out the numbers and the set builder form means it is a set defined with the, the definition coming to the next one if the elements in the set are finite then it is called a finite set otherwise it is infinite set finite means the number of elements in the set is defined to be the finite okay let me consider the next one a set with a single element is called a singleton set and a set with no elements is called an empty set denoted by phi okay denoted by phi and subset we know that if I consider as a set notation, if, if I take up A as a set as like this one and which contained in B, I say every element of A is an element of B. Therefore, I say that A is contained in B and I say that A is a subset of B. It is entirely inside B. So, therefore, I say it is called subset. Suppose it might happen that A can be equal to B also. If it is not equal to, then it is called proper subset. Coming to, therefore, it is called proper subset if it is equal to that. If it is not equal, sorry, if it is not equal, then I say it is called proper subset. Right? Now, coming to the next one. Power set. What is meant by power set? So, the set of all subsets of the given set is called the power set. For example, if I take up the set A is equal to 1, 3, 5, then form a set which is actually the set of all elements of the set of this A. So, null set, set 1, set 3, set 5, set 1, 3, set 3, 5 and set 5, 1 and set 1, 3, 5. These are things. So, as we are calculating and the power set in a particular sequence, the number of elements in the power set will always be equals to 2 to the power of n minus 1 where n indicates actually the number of elements in the set A. Number of elements in the set A and the power of set is denoted by P of A. So, if the set has n elements, its power set has got 2 to the power of n elements. I am sorry, this is 2 power n only. 2 power n minus 1 is nothing but actually the non-empty subsets means uh, we have to remove the null set that's how we describe about the power set coming to the next one is a union of the set so through the diagram it will be easy to understand if i consider the set a and if i take up the set b set of all elements in a set of all elements in b and set of all elements in a and b both so, that is said to be called union of the sets. Means, if I take up A union B means set of X such that X belongs to A or B or A intersection B. That is called union of the set. Coming to intersection of the sets. Means, if I take up this A and B, the elements which belong to, which are common to the set A, set B are said to be intersection A, intersection B. Right. Coming to the next uh, difference of the sets. If I consider the elements of the set A which belongs to set A alone but not in the B, then I say it is said to be called A minus B. So, in general, if I take up that, 
in general if i take up this is nothing but a intersection b and this portion is a minus b because belongs to a alone but not b and this a is nothing but b minus a because these are the elements belonging to b alone but not in a and this is a intersection b let's proceed to the next one complement of a set what is meant by complement of a set um suppose if i consider a set a in the universal set so set of all elements or you can say the difference of the set a from universal set is nothing but actually set uh, that's called complement set say for example in the venn diagram when i take up this is a the universal set which i am taking one set i am taking a now the set of all elements which do not belong to a that's nothing but a universal set minus the set a that is called actually the complement of the set of course the complement of the complement is nothing but a itself the set itself the complement of null set is universal set and the complement of nar universal set is a null set <coughs> coming to these are the d morgan laws so the d morgan laws are very much useful in the lower class you might have proved already so just let us revise uh, the concept here when i take up the union uh, complement the complement of the union gives us a intersection complements so union will become intersection intersection will become union in this case same way when you see the difference a minus of b union c is nothing but a minus b intersection a minus c at the same time a minus of b intersection c is nothing but a minus b union a minus c so therefore be careful in case of uh, the de morgan law union will become intersection intersection will become union coming to the next cartesian product you know if a comma b are any two sets okay then set of all ordered pairs from set a comma set b is defined to be called cross product suppose if you have 1 2 and here a b c the possible ordered pairs are nothing but 1 a 1 b 1 c so therefore 1 a comma 1 b comma 1 c at the same time then 2a comma 2b comma 2c so 2b comma 2c that's how we define what is called cartesian product remember that in case of the cartesian and it is denoted by a cross b and remember that uh, if uh, the set a contains m elements and m elements and set b contains n elements say this is m elements n elements then a cross b contains m n elements okay and um, of course uh, when i take up the two sets uh, which do not have any common intersection means a intersection b is equals to 5 in that case uh, union of a uh, number of elements of union is equals to n of a plus n of b number of elements in set a plus number of elements in b directly gives us the union okay right coming to when a comma b are not disjoint sets then these are certain identities which we follow so one is nothing but union of them is nothing but n of a plus n of b minus n of a intersection b this is a and this is b so therefore now when you take up this is a which you are taking entirely number of elements in b entirely you are taking but there are points which are common points are counted twice and therefore you are subtracting it once same way when you take up number of elements in a now from the diagram you can clearly see that this portion is a minus b this is a intersection b this portion is b minus a the number of elements in set a is nothing but a minus b and a intersection b put together is nothing but plus okay a 
sorry the a number of elements in a is equals to n of a minus b plus n of a intersection b and uh, n of b minus a is nothing but n of b minus of n of a intersection b so from the total subtract the intersection elements so the overall the union is nothing but actually set of elements belonging to a minus b set of elements belonging to b minus a and set of elements belonging to a intersection b put together is nothing but union coming to relation so the mainly what is meant by a relation a relation r from a to b okay is a subset of a cross b a subset of a cross b wherein a is in relation with b a related to b that is called a relation okay which is always in other words i say that uh, it is a, a relation is a set of ordered pairs set of ordered pairs a comma p belongs to r where a belongs to a and b belongs to b at the same time that uh, a is in relation with b that is an additional thing which we need to remember it coming to this uh, the what is meant by domain and range of the relation in case when you take up the relation from set a to set b set of all first coordinates over here is called the domain of here set of all elements in the first set if r is relation from set a to set b so set of all elements in a in the relation is defined to be called the domain set of all in the relation when you take up the coordinates r is equals to x1 comma y1 etc so set of all first coordinates is the domain set of all second coordinates is called the range of the function here so let's see that i'm oh, sorry it is a, a set of elements in the domain and ranges of the relation coming to the next inverse relation so obviously so when i take up for example if uh, the relation has got ordered pairs uh, a comma b comma c comma d then inverse relation is nothing but actually set of ordered pairs wherein the ordered pairs is just reverse it uh, b to a and d to c that is defined to be called inverse relation right that means inverse relation is nothing but b comma a where a comma b belongs to r coming to the different uh, types of relations which are defined on one set one is called a relation reflexive relation a relation a is said to be reflexive if every element of a belongs to a a comma a for every belong a belongs to a so a comma a belongs to a so that is how we define suppose when you take up the set a as a 1 comma 2 then you must have the relation as uh, in the relation 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 is must other elements might exist that's called reflexive relation coming to symmetric relation means nothing but uh, so <coughs> if r is a relation r is a relation defined on a set r and if a comma b belongs to r b comma a should also belongs to r then i say the i mean the relation r is defined to be symmetric relation so whenever a comma b belongs to the relation b comma a should also belongs to the relation that's how we define what is called symmetric coming to the transitive relation suppose a comma b belongs to r b comma c belongs to r then a comma c has to belong to r then the it is said to be called transitive relation right coming to the next one an equivalence relation a relation which is uh, reflexive symmetric as well as the transitive reflexive symmetric as well as transitive that is called equivalence relation coming to the function now now a mapping defined from set a to set b is nothing but a relation where that mapping relates every element of a with unique element of b okay with unique element of b 
that's how we define what you call the term i mean the function here and the first set is called the domain second set is called the code mean of the function and the set of all images of x under f is nothing but actually f y equals f of x and also called pre and x is called the pre image of y under f okay let me take up this one the range of f is a set of those elements of b which appear as the image which appear as the image of f the image of at least one element of a and is denoted by f of a so let me consider f of a means set of all elements which are related from the set a to the set b all the elements which are the images of the elements of a and that is called the range this is called a range whereas b is called the code mean okay right remember this and coming to the next different concepts on the function so one is called one one function and two function we know if distinct elements are related with the distinct images i say it is called one one function it's quite obvious directly it conveys the meaning what is meant by onto function suppose if i consider an element y belongs to b that must be image of at least one element in a such that f of x is equals to y such mapping is defined to be called onto mapping for every y which belongs to b there exists x such that f of x is equals to y then i say that the mapping is called the onto and a mapping which is one one and onto both is called the bijection i think it is a by mistake it is given this is one to one on and onto one to one onto a mapping is said to be one one and on to if it is a bijective mapping one one on to okay r bijective if it is both one one and on to right coming to into function a mapping which is not a one <coughs> a mapping which is not on to is called into mapping and a mapping which is not many to one sorry a mapping which is not one one is called many to one mapping many to one mapping coming to different types of the functions identity relation identity function means f a to b is said to be identity function if f of x is equal to x for every x belongs to a then i say f is said to be called identity mapping and where a is equals to b definitely because f is a mapping defined from set a to set b as f of x equals x so that means whatever be the element in a is related with the same element in b itself and therefore b is equals to a have to be b equals to a coming to constant function and whatever be the domain in the domain if the range consists if the range is a single term set then i say it is said to be called a constant mapping and that is a fixed element so identity mapping yeah identity f f a to b is said to be constant mapping i hope there is a mistake here it is a, a constant mapping a constant mapping if f of x is equal to k for all x belongs to a correct that called constant mapping and what is meant by odd function even function now we know when a function f of minus x is equals to minus f of x then i say it is said to be odd function just for example we know sin inverse of minus x is nothing but minus sin inverse x so such mapping is called odd mapping then what is even mapping if f of minus x is equal to plus f of x then the function is said to be even function so for example x square is an even function 
So f of x is equal to x square wherein when you take up here f of minus x is equal to minus x who taken whole square which is plus x. So therefore I would say that a mapping is defined to be even function if f of minus x is same as f of x. Is same as f of x. Continuation next property of the function is a periodic function. What is meant by periodic function? If uh, there exists a real number t, which is the least positive number, such that uh, f of x is equal to f of x plus t, then I say f is uh, called a periodic function with the period t. Of course, as a period t, then it is also period to f of x. I mean, the f of x plus 2t is the same as f of x plus t is the same as f of x. That means 2t is also period, 3t is also period, n pi n t is also period of the function. Therefore, f of x is a periodic function which has no fixed the periodicity of the function. It may change depending upon the function. Let's consider inverse uh, function. If f a to b is a bijective function, then <coughs> is a bijective function, then the inverse function exists. Okay, inverse function exists where f inverse is nothing but b to a. f inverse is from b to a. So let's consider the next composite mapping. Composition of a mapping means I say if f is a mapping from a to b. If f is a mapping from A to B and G is a mapping from B to C, then a mapping G circle of is from A to C. So G circle from A to C exists. That's called so composition of a mapping. G circle of f of x. Next, there are certain important results which we need to memorize. So one is uh, called actually A cross B and B cross A. If A and B are two non-empty sets having n elements in common, then A cross B is equals to A cross B and B cross A will have n square elements. N square elements. If A and B are two non-empty sets such that n of A is equal to m, n of B is equal to n, then the number of possible relations that can be defined from A to B is equal to 2 to the power of mn. 2 power mn. Okay, let's see that. And these are some of the results which are very useful while calculations. Hope you understood. f of x is a function then half of f of x plus f of minus x is even, half of f of x minus f of minus x is even, uh, is odd function. Thereby, by adding these two, you will be getting f of x. So therefore, if f of x is any function that is not necessarily be even or odd function. So if f of x is any function can be expressed as a, okay, uh, as an even function, and an odd function even function and odd function right coming to some of the other aspects if a and b are two finite such sets such that n of a is equals to m and n of b is equal to n then the conditions which they follow the number of functions from set a to set b is equals to n to the power of m the number of one one and two functions Number of 1 1 function from A into B is given by NPM. Number of injections. Number of injections from A to B is given by this one. So while calculating number of 1 1 mapping, you must check that one that number of elements in the set A will always be number of elements in set A will always be less than number of elements in B. Then only it is possible to have NPM. Coming to the next one, the number of elements, number of on 
two mapping so from set a is equals to the number of ways of dividing m things into n groups so that no group is empty see this concept will describe in permutations and combination later cases i mean in detail okay the number of bisection from set a to set b is m factorial where m is equal to n or zero otherwise so that's how we describe about the number of mappings of 1 1 on to a number of bijections so coming to some of the other uh, important things which we require here in case f a to b is a bijection if f a to b bijection so a function f a to b is a bijection then n of a must be equals to n of b that means in order to have a bijective mapping in order to have a bijective mapping you must have both the sets must be of the same elements okay okay similarly if uh, in injective mapping is possible only when n of a elements are less and subjective is possible only when n of uh, a elements are in more and definitely if it is a bijection then n of a must be equals n of b and uh, 2 power n minus 2 represents actually the number of onto mappings that are defined from set a to set b set a consisting of n elements and the set b consisting of only two elements so set a consisting of 1 2 3 and so on n elements set b consisting of two elements each element can be related with either a or b either a or b either a or b like that all the elements can be uh, related in uh, two ways each uh, such elements are n is a 2 to the power of n combinations are there out of each uh, all the elements related to a is must be subtracted all the elements related to b must also be subtracted so to subtracting it uh, gives us uh, the total number of mappings uh, 2 to the power of n minus 2 coming to the next one and these are the term, some of the important uh, the formulae which is uh, very much useful in simplifying uh, things. And the domain of this function under root is equal to a square minus x square. Please try to remember for all the three, the condition to follow is nothing but uh, if you have a root of something f of x, f of x must be greater than or equal to 0. If you find 1 by root of f of x, then I say that f of x has to be only greater than 0 but not equal to 0. Okay. Some other results, saving results as follows like this one. Please go through once. Yeah, it's okay. Let's proceed to next uh, statistics, linear inequalities and linear programming it. So statistics, first basic one. So in case uh, uh, the I mean the measures of dispersion, the first measure of dispersion is nothing but the range. What is meant by range? If you are given a data x1, x2, n3 and so on xn, the difference between the largest data and the least data is defined to be called the range that is a highest the highest value or the greatest value or the largest anyway we can say i say g x g and minus of x l so therefore the i mean greatest observation minus the least observations are uh, i mean the difference is called the range Coming to the next one, what about the mean deviation? Deviation means nothing but actually mean deviation, sorry. The name itself says that one mean deviation. So the mean of the deviations which are taken from either from horizon, okay, or from median or from medi median or from mode. So that is called the mean deviation it is average of so the average of the deviation so let's see 
individual uh, series. Uh, the mean deviation is given by. If you are taking the data x1, x2 and so on, xn, then you would be getting actually the expansion like this. When you ex if you are taking the deviations from the arithmetic mean, okay, let us say A, then you will be getting the formula like this, sigma x1 minus A plus sigma, sorry, modulus x1 minus A, modulus x2 minus A and so on, modulus xn minus A. Coming to the, this is actually the formula for the, so, <clears throat> for the discrete series. How would you calculate the mean deviation? The mean deviation formula is equal to sigma modulus of xi minus a into fi divided by n. The, okay, that list is nothing but actually finding the mean deviation. And we shall work out by taking examples later cases. Capital N is equal to f of x is nothing but actually the total frequency. Now, let me consider the next one, standard deviation. The standard deviation referred to as root mean squared deviation about the mean. So, the mean deviations which are taken from the mean only, the standard deviation referred to as root mean square deviations for about the mean is called the standard deviation. The next one is about the standard deviation for the individual series. This is the formula. And uh, the same formula can be put up in the sigma notations. And it looks like this one. After simplification, sigma is equal to under root of sigma xi square by n minus sigma xi by n taken whole square. Coming to the series. And uh, the same standard deviation formula, just slightly modified with the frequency distribution. Okay, if x1 to xn are nothing but the frequencies, sorry, and f1 to fn are the frequencies for the given data. And this is the formula you need to work out when the problem is given. Hope it's clear. Let's see that. And these are certain important points which are related to the theoretical part. Okay, just go through one. The square of the standard deviation is termed as a variance. Hope you understood now. Standard deviation notation is a sigma actually. And variance is given by sigma square. And each of the item is increased by a fixed constant of the standard deviation uh, each fixed constant the standard deviation does not alter the standard deviation does not alter or the standard deviation will be the independent of the change of origin right coming to the next one these are the formulae which are related with the statistics for a discrete series in the form a a plus d a plus 2d and so on which are in arithmetic progression standard deviation is given by root over n square minus 1 divided by 12 okay where n indicates the number of terms in case of the other uh, the standard deviation for the first n natural numbers is given by root of n square minus 1 divided by 12. Coming to the next one, coefficient of variance. The coefficient of variation is nothing but actually, it is a sigma divided by x bar multiplied by 100. You know the sigma is nothing but standard deviation divided by the arithmetic mean multiplied by 100 sigma divided by x bar multiplied by 100 where sigma is called the standard deviation x bar is the uh, the mean of the observation now what is the purpose of this uh, coefficient of variance uh, this coefficient of variation 
will give us uh, the observation about the consistency of the given data. So, of the of, of consistency of the data, the more the the more the coefficient of variance, the more the variability. The next thing is about the linear inequalities. So, what are linear inequalities? You know, an equation or a statement involving less than or greater than, less than or equals to, greater than or equals to is called linear inequality. Of course, so what is meant by interval? Set of all real numbers which lies between a comma b excluding a comma b is called the open interval a comma b like this. Whereas uh, the closed interval means set of all elements which uh, set of all real numbers where every element is uh, lie between a comma b where a and b are also included in this one. Set of all elements of real number lies between a comma b including a comma b is called the closed interval. Of course, uh, the inequality is uh, the property of inequality means when we multiply it or when you divide by a same positive number inequality does not affect whereas when you multiply divide by a negative number the inequality will be changed so next one the graphical solution of linear inequality graphical solution means nothing but Whenever you are given okay, a linear inequality, let's say for example, ax plus by is greater than or equal to c, where c is a constant. Then definitely you consider a straight line like ax plus by is equal to c, you draw a straight line and then take up a point either one side of the straight line and check by substituting over here. If that point satisfies uh, that uh, ax plus by is greater than or equal to c, then I say that the point lies on the so I mean upper side. Otherwise, the point should lies on the lower side. But this overall in detail, we will be going further explaining about uh, taking example about the graphical solution. Now, this is an example when I take a straight line, a vertical line is dividing the x, I mean the space into two halves. So one is the right half, one is the left half. And being it is an inclined line, we cannot say right half and left half, but you can say that upper half and lower half. Uh, by this context, we will be taking it here. Right? So, that's about the, the concepts of linear inequalities. Okay. So, take up uh, problems in the next uh, continuation and we'll try to solve it.